Greetings. Welcome to the fourth lesson in the series of the Yang style short form Tai Chi Chuan. I'm Michael Gilman. So let's review, just basically go through what we've gone through up to this point, and then we'll add in new movements. So let's just follow, follow along from the rear. Standing comfortably. Commencement of Tai Chi Chuan. Sink into the right foot. Step out. Pong. Lu. Ji. And on. Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back. Press. Push. Fist under elbow. Step back and repulse monkey. Slanting flying. Raise hands. Good. Let's go once from the front. I think, uh, let's see. Right here. Commencement. Now remember, we're gathering the energy into the hips. So you're going to go down, fold the quad, gather the energy into the hip. When the other foot touches, center up. Now I've got gathered in two hips, and I open the hips. Pong. Gather the two hips. The energy is concentrating in the hip area. Then we release it out. We gather it back in. If you're going to release it first, you have to gather it and release. Ward off. Here I'm gathered into the uh, left. Open. Gather into the right. Step and open the hip, ponging upward. Ward off left. Gather to the right hip. Left hip, I'm sorry, the left hip. Step out. Release. Don't forget to turn in the back toe. Roll back. Gather into the left hip. Press, release the left hip. Gather into the left hip. Release the left hip. Fist under elbow. Well, There's a kind of a transition here. We don't have to worry too much about gathering and releasing. But here we're going to gather into the right hip and then we release for the slap. Now there's a tendency when you release here is to rise up. Now keep the same level but open the hip. Good. Then we're stepping around. Gather into the right hip and release. Step back and repulse monkey. Gather into the right hip. 
There's a tendency, let me move back just a little bit. There's a tendency to float on top of this hip and just fall back. Make sure that as you turn, you're gathering the energy into the hip. Then open the hip. The other side, gather into the left hip as you step back and open. Gather into the right hip and open. Slanting flying. Gather into the left hip and open. Raise hands. First, you have to gather into the right hip, then gather into the left hip, and open the energy. Raise hands. Okay. Let's go one more time from the back. I better come this way a bit. <clears throat> Commencement of Tai Chi Chuan. Gather. Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back. Press. Push. Fist under elbow. Step back and repulse monkey. Slanting flying. Raise hands. Okay, let me show you the next few movements that we're going to hopefully work on today. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Needle at sea bottom. Fan through the back. Now I'm going to make a, a decision here that um, we've talked about this, and this is the way that I have been teaching the short form uh, for the last quite a few years. But um, I've decided to change this single whip. I only did it, made my decision yesterday, so it certainly isn't in my mind yet. So here's the way it's going to be. After left brush and knee. Oh. Needle at seat bottom. Fan through the back. Uh, 
Okay. Let me do, let me do these, these uh, show you these movements after raise hands, what it's going to look like, and then I'll bring in John, and we'll talk. Stork spreads its wings. See if you can kind of imagine what I'm doing here. Left brush knee. What's going on here? It's a pantomime of some sort. What is it? Needle at C bottom. Fan through the back. Okay. John, would you come in? Yeah. Greetings once again. Good to see you. Okay. So um, all of this is going to be happening. The stork spreads its wings is going to be happening in this direction. But we'll, uh, we'll have John here so you, you can see what's going on here. Now, I've just finished um, raise hands. It's, yes, raise hands. And John is going to punch in with this hand. Now, I sh could stop him here, which isn't too bad a movement, or I can try and block him once his punch gets momentum. But what in Tai Chi, what we're going to do is, because he's punching with this side, and he's, he has another hand on this side, what I'm, I want to encourage him in, go f neutralize, this is what we call neutralize, that I'm getting out of the way, and I'm actually possibly giving him a little pull. And as this weapon, this tool, is past me, I step in and give him what's known as a shoulder strike. Now, if you can see here, my stance is sort of inside of his stance. I'm kind of in his space. And this is an important concept that what's known as six harmonies, six harmonies. Let's say, put one foot forward, John. Let's say we're at toe to toe. Well, I certainly, so you're just standing. Okay. I certainly can't reach him with my shoulder. And I can't reach him with my elbow without falling over. The only thing I can reach him with is my fist. And I also can reach him with my toe or foot. So this is known as one harmony, the long distance. My long distance tools are the fist and the uh, foot. So that's if you're approximately toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If I'm further than that, I can't use any of my tools. So this is about the right distance. Now, if for some reason we're about, say he's in knee to knee, knee to knee, allows me to use my elbow without, without any discomfort, and also lets me use my knee to do different things. So when the knees are approximately together, I can use my knee and I can use my elbow. It's a little close for the fist, and, so, and to kick, it's a little bit close. And it's a little out of the way for my shoulder and my hip. Okay, so the next level is if I'm really into his space, I can use my shoulder and my hip. I can't use my fist, and I certainly can't use my foot. I can use my elbow a little bit, but would not, not, not all that great. Okay, so, th so the harmonies are the fist and the uh, foot for long distance. Medium range is the elbow and the knee and close range is the shoulder and the hip. In this case, depending upon where I, when, when he's coming in, were I to only step this far, I'd have to hit him because I can't use any other tool. If he, I neutralize and I'm about knee to knee, I can use my elbow or I can knee him. I can just, just do something with my knees. 
But in this case, hopefully in this movement, I step in enough so that I can crunch in with my hip and shoulder right to his center. And I've got to do that because he's got another hand here. And so I need to get inside and I need to get in there quick. Now, another thing that you'll notice when we do this movement is this is what's called outreaching. When he starts his energy, I want to be on him as soon as I can. If I wait to try and do it when he's built up momentum and speed, I'm going to have a hard time. You know, it's, it maybe it's going too fast. But if I can outreach when he starts, then I get inside. Then this hand, I'm going to, this, I don't need to worry about this anymore. I'm on his elbow. And this hand can hit, can do something, or protect myself. And you'll see this movement, right, like this. Okay, so that's the first part of this particular movement. He's coming, he's coming in to tr try and attack my center. I neutralize, step in, and hit. Now, he falls back. He tries to get out of the way. As he tries to get out of the way, I transfer, grab his hand. Okay? I grab his hand and at the same time follow him with either chop, hit, knock or just push him out of the way. But it's important that I grab him so he doesn't get out, so doesn't get away. Okay, so this whole movement is in, hit, back, and open. That's what we call stork spreads its wings. And let's just do, uh, while we're here, let's follow up with uh, uh, left brush knee, which would be the next movement. From stork, so if you'd come over back a little bit here. Uh, let's, we're going to do this so you can kind of see the angle a little bit. I'm going to change the angle. It may be confuse you, but it, it, it maybe it's easier. So here I've just finished uh, that. And this is a one-two punch. One-two. Now, this is what we call neutralize. And again, I'm going to outreach and basically slap him by. I want him further extended than he wants to be. So it's a, it's, it's a sticking quality with the palm. As he comes in, I attach to his palm, to his wrist area, and I guide him and glide him by me. Okay. So the main thing is I'm getting my body out of the way. Second thing is I'm guiding him. Now, he quickly withdraws and punches me with the other side. So it's a one, two, okay? So in this case, as the second one comes in, I do the basically the same movement. So it's one, two. Now, I'm tired of this game. So on the second one, I'm going to add a little pull. And as I pull, he feels uncomfortable. So I step in and deliver a palm strike to the face or to the chest. Like that. This is called brush knee. So he comes in, so one, two, three. So that's brush knee. So let me work on these and then I'll call you back for the rest. Thanks. Okay, so now you have to imagine, you have to imagine uh, what we're doing here, okay? So remember, so here I was, raise hands. He's punching in. I step in, because, because he's coming this way, I want to get inside of it when it's still going this way. So we're going to replace the foot, reach out to the elbow and, and wrist. I'm going to guide it by me. Now once, once the elbow is about to my center of my body, that means the Wrist is past me, so I don't have to worry about it. I let go of that, and this hand comes up. And at the same time, I'm in a position to I can just give the shoulder and, and or the hip. He tries to escape. I grab hold, and as he's going flying back this way, I hit back. Now, if you notice, let's look at the foot movement here. 
I'll do it in the I'll do it in the right direction so you can think about. So here's our starting direction right here. Raise hands is slightly to the right. Now, he's right in front of me basically at this point. I'm going to replace this step in as far as I can without moving my body. And I'm going to step down at a 45 degree angle. This is going to be my final direction. At a 45 degree angle. And then I just shift the weight sideways, delivering the hip and the shoulder. And it's coming from this back leg. So don't, uh, don't break the root of this back leg. You're hitting. Now look at that again. Step. I could kick him. I could step on his foot. But I'm going to put it down at a 45. Then we shift sideways. And finally, turn the waist. Now as I turn, you notice I'm pivoting this toe and finally replacing it to Dingbo stance on toe in the proper direction that my body's headed. Replace, shift sideways, turning the torso, pivot, and at the end, replace the toe. Now this replace the toe is very important energetically. As you know, and as, you've been, as we've been talking about, we have what's called Dwey Law, this counterbalance of energies. We need to constantly be vigilant not to overdo. So in this case, When I pulled John and this came backwards, this energy is going back. If I don't do something, there's a, there's, there is a tendency for, if the energy was, if I was really hitting hard, for, for the energy to pull me back and out of my center. So at the same time I do that, I replace the toe. So it, it just makes the whole structure very solid and keeps me from overdoing. Yeah. So at any time where you're delivering a lot of energy, it's very easy to overdo. And look for the way to counterbalance that. And we have it in this case. OK, so once again, back here. Replace. Side, pivot, replace. All right. And we're going to end up facing directly to the 90 degrees to the left of where we started. OK, let's look at the hands. Let's look at the hands and see what's happening. OK. So there would be straight. And here, I'm turned a little bit from raise hands. First thing, as I step we outreached to, it's now, I'm going to, John is like straight ahead here, so I'm going to outreach to this straight place, to the elbow and wrist. These hands are in the, are all, I'm also, right now in this movement, I'm on his wrist and elbow, and I'm going to basically keep the same shape, only he's changing directions and angles. Now, I'm starting in. At this point, the right hand is no longer, and the left hand is no longer needed. So as it, as I continue over, this hand just comes up to end, at, actually in the center of my body, in the direction my body's headed. This arm has quite a bit of pong in it. It's not like, it would be easy to do something like this. But then my arm could be trapped against my body and a lot of things could happen that I don't care about, want to see have happen. So elbow, wrist, 
pull by. Pong, this has a nice pong quality, and this hand is up. At that point, I turn over for a grab, which means sort of the tiger's mouth hand. And as I pull him across, the other hand opens. Now, this hand is sort of by the side of the body. The, the direction of its energy is backward in this particular movement. So I'm slapping with the back of the hand. So it's a kind of a pivot of the, at the elbow. Not much happening to the shoulder, but a pivot at the elbow. The other hand is pulling down and ends up, see, have we been here yet? It ends up, it's called brushing the knee because the hand is sort of relating to the knee. It's at the knee level. It's at the knee level. And um, a lot of times this brush is, it, it happens on a downward level. Like if somebody were punching to my lower body, I, we call this brush the knee. And finally, we set the wrist, and it ends up by the side of the thigh. Now, a lot of times you'll see this kind of either way back here, which I think is too far, or you know, out. It'll be anywhere. I like to have it just slightly in front and slightly to the side of the leg. And this is going to be quite a, it, we're going to have it there a lot. We're, the brush knee is a very popular movement. We do it a lot in the long form. And, um, and we use this place a lot as sort of a resting, grabbing place. OK, so here's Stork. Let's do uh, Stork spreads its wings from raise hands. We outreach, replace the foot at a 45. Come to shoulder or hip. We grab, we pull down with the left hand, and the right hand opens, and we replace at the very end. Stork spreads its wings. Reach out, elbow strike, shoulder strike, open. Okay, let's do from um, slanting flying, raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Okay, left brush knee. Remember, he first he punched me with his left hand, so this hand led him by. Now, this, this hand at the same time relaxes. Then he withdrew it and punched the other side. So this hand falls down to relax while this hand comes up to do its job and we neutralize to this side. At the end, when he's fully extended, I give a little pull and set myself up to return the energy via a strike. And here's this hand position once again. Now let's see if you can, we can see this. Now watch this direction. Stork spreads his wings. Left brush knee. Turn. Turn. Pull, step, set up. Brush. Strike. Now, in this movement, the hand, this brushing movement, this hand falls down the center as this hand comes up. 
Then as you turn, this hand comes up just like it did, sort of like when it did for a step back and repulse monkey, just came up in front of the shoulder. Then we pulled and are ready. Now this, I'm just going to get his hand out of the way. So we changed the orientation to a get out of the way hand, which, we, which, which is a sort of a push down with the side of the body hand. And finally, now, the two wrists are relaxed. At the end of the movement, they both set, as we talked about last week. Brush knee. This hand comes to the very center, and this hand is in its usual place by brush knee. <clears throat> okay, so watch with the hands once again. Outreach. Draw in shoulder strike portion of storage practice wings. Open, replace the toe. Left brush knee. Neutralize. Neutralize. Pull step and strike. Okay, once again in the direction that we're headed, raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Outreach. Shoulder. Hit back. Neutralize. Neutralize. Pull. And hit. Okay. Let's put this from the end of Repulse Monkey. Have this in. slanting flying, returning, lock down, and strike the neck, splitting the energy, relax, getting back and out of the way. We neutralize with the left and close in on the elbow. Raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. He punches in. We outreach. Lead it by us. Shoulder hip and back slap. Stork spreads its wings. He punches. We neutralize. He punches again. We neutralize. We lead him a little further than he wants to go, then push the arm down and we come out for left brush knee. Okay, the next one is what we call needle at C bottom. Now watch, relax. Grab. Pull down. Poke. Fan through the back. All right, so John, I need you back again. <clears throat> so in this case, after brush knee, he's grabbed me with this hand. Is that comfortable, Graham? Mm -hmm. Just try, try grabbing from the bottom, probably be out like that, probably better. So don't you think that's more comfortable? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he grabs me. Now. If I pull, pull him to get out, what will probably happen is this side, either he's going to let go, but then he's free to come charging in, right? Because right? he's got this whole side available. So I don't want to, to allow, I need to close him up. Remember, we always want to close the energy up. So this time, what I'm, going to, I'm going to relax. And as I go back, instead of pulling back with this hand so much, this hand's going to come up and knock off and grab. At this point, I do a new energy, what we call tsai, tsai, or pull down. And this can be the most devastating of all. You can really hurt somebody with this one. So you be careful if you're really playing with somebody. And that what I'm going to do is I jerk him down. But you notice when I jerk him down, if he's relaxed, and if you look down, his neck goes like this. And if I really did it hard, you can easily, it's easy to give somebody a whiplash and hurt them. So you want to be very careful. 
So after my left brush, and he, he, he grabs me. So I get it, I'm going to get back a little bit. I need to, I want to ex extend him a little bit. Now remember, say, say there, stay there, and said, hold me here. John is right at the edge of his bubble. He's got a lot of strength right there. Now, kind of still hold on, but let go. No, no. Now you try and hold me. You see, he's, he's beyond his strength. He, he doesn't have much strength out here, and it's, it's easy for me to, to manipulate him. So if I'm, not too, if I'm not too, when he grabs me, if I'm not too hard, I can lead him a little bit away. You know, he's holding on, but he's getting extended. So at the point that he gets extended, I knock him off. Now this little knockoff, if, if you notice this, let's say turn just a little, come over this way a little bit, uh, okay, so they can see. Now watch, so he's got me. If I relax, we always want to get out through the thumb. Remember, we, we've worked on this before. When I want to get out, I want to get out through the thumb. So when this hand comes up, the thumb is getting out of there, and this hand is pushing his arm up. So it's easy for me to slip through. At that point, I roll over, twist his arm, and pull him down. Then, this other hand, we talk about a poke. If, if I was closer, you, you poke different. You could, I could poke him here, hit him. I could get his elbow, uh, and signified by a, a, a poking down. You know, if I got him far enough in, you see a lot of times if, if, if you really get him back, then they poke towards the, rib, the, the kidneys, the back, the neck, and all that kind of stuff. So this is what's, what's called needle at sea bottom, and it's a psi, psi energy. So back, pull down, and poke. Now, let's say I didn't do a very good job, and he starts to go. He's starting to get out of there. You know, I didn't get him or something. So I'm going to follow him up. As he starts to re retreat, this hand follows him up, opens him up, and this hand then comes out for a strike. And this hand just keeping him at bay, and this hand is coming in to strike him along his center line. Okay, so this sequence. He grabs me. I come back, pull him down. He comes to retreat. I step in and do fan through the back. Okay, great, thanks for that. Okay, so, so see if you can see this. From left brush knee. We do the replace step, which we've done when we were doing raise hands, which signifies, for some reason, I could still, I could come up and do this for some reason, I'm not sure, but I could certainly extend back quite a bit. So we just do what we call replace the step, feed the front root. Then as we come back, this hand comes up and pull down and poke. Lift up, fan through the back. I lift up, step in, and fan through the back. Now let's, uh, let me face, uh, face straight ahead. Who's on, who am I looking at? Okay. Um, I want you to see how, how this relates to the corners and to, to the directions. So after left brush knee, when I replace, this hand is going to pull right down to the waist. I'm going to use here my, 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 I'm gathered into this quaw and I'm twisted. As I release this quaw, this arm ends up by the side. Now, there's a tendency to want to do something like this, you know, get back. But if you do that, you may be, you know, fall, fall over. Don't let the arm get back further than straight upper arm. Okay, so we relax to connect. By relaxing, I connect this to my waist and to my hip. Replace. Now, as this hand comes down, 
this hand comes up. Now the angle, say this is straight, say you're this straight, say you're John, and I've just done this, and he grabs. So I'm going to knock him off, but I'm coming over and facing more a bit to my right. Now I've got a bit of a twist in my waist so that I can pull, use my waist to pull him down and the other hand pokes out. Now, one of the major problems in this is the shifting of the weight forward when you're poking, relaxing. One, here's one problem, is when you go to replace is to lean forward. Now, because I'm leaning forward, it'd be very easy to get pulled forward. You have to make sure when you replace, you feed the front quad by relaxing. See, now if he pulls me, he pulls me into my root and I'm strong and I can do things. If I'm out here and he pulls, well then I, I can't do anything, I'm into my toes and I'm in trouble. So one, replace. Two, come back. Grab. So we're facing a little bit to the right. Now, as you pull down, the fingers poke out. Now here's another problem, is putting the weight on the forward foot when you poke. Now if this, if he were to pull me, I would just go right forward. But by keeping the weight on the back foot, if he pulls, you have this front foot as a break. If I'm already on the front foot, I can't do it. I can't use it as a break. So you want to make sure you keep your back nice and straight. So here, one. Two, three. Now a really beautiful, a beautiful thing is when the Dwey Law for this movement, the Dwey Law for this movement is really important and really makes the movement look good and feel good. Let's see, say if I was doing it in the proper direction. You see, here's, here's, here's one draw. As this hand is pulling down back, this hand's going out. So if I didn't go out, I mean, I could pull myself back. But the movement's designed so that this hand is coming up as this hand goes back. So that keeps the, the movement very balanced. Okay, so one, now, as this hand's pulling in and down, this one's going out, there's another balance. As this one's pulling in, it would be easy to kind of pull yourself out, but this hand's going to come out at the same time you're pulling down. What you, what you want to do is, is keep the spine straight. It's very easy to let the, the back lose its integration. By keeping your spine straight and just bending here, you maintain your integrity. Even though you're bending forward, if I was pulled, I'm, you, he's not going to pull me out. I've got good integrity. Here, it would be easy to, easier to get knocked over. Now, the Dwey Law for this is the energy comes up and out the top of the head. As I'm pulling down, there's counterbalance of energy going up. So there's something energetically rising up my spine, rising out the top of the head at the same time that my body is lowering. That way, I can, I can look down on him no matter what my position, I'm energetically over top of him. Now it's very easy, if you come in here a second, John, if you would, please. On, on this movement, when he grabs me, this movement, it's very easy to do this. That I am pulling, think I'm pulling him down, right? But he's on top of me. 
right? And he could do something. What I want to do, you see, I'm pulling him down. I'm on top of him. Do you see the difference? One is that I'm pulling him down using my body preceding my arm. The other is the arm precedes the body. And at the same time I'm doing this, this is coming up and coming out. So I feel like I'm about six feet over him, and he's down there. And then when he comes out, I step out and open, again through the back. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, let's put this in with the movements that we've just been working on. From raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Outreach. Lead by shoulder strike. Grab, pull, and back slap. Left brush knee. Neutralize. Neutralize. Step and palm strike. Set the wrist. He grabs. Relax. Feed the front root. Coming back. Take him off. Reach around, grab, pull down, and poke. The hand returns to the same place that it's been. Following up, this arm lifts him up. We step in. This turns over. I can grab his arm, and this just comes straight out for a strike to the center. Could be up a little bit, down a little bit, but in, for the form, basically, we're, we're straight. And this, this strike, I'm using the heel of the palm to strike with. This is the, the hardest piece. Sometimes, if we're using like a slapping energy, if we're, if we're using like a slapping energy, I would use the center of the palm. But in this case, I'm hitting into ribs and kind of hard things. I'm going to use either, the, either this side or this side of the heel of the hand. So you'll see if, if I was, say, facing here. So I lift up. See, so it's, it's right here I'm focusing on, as opposed to if I was doing something, you know, I could, if I was doing with the palm, it would be some, but see, the angle's not right here. If I'm going straight in this direction, I'm straight, the angle twists a bit here, and it's very uncomfortable for my palm at this angle. All I have to do is change this angle. It's much more comfortable for my palm, and energetically, the energy can come here. The energy, can you see it's twisting around? If I, if I wanted to do, put it straight ahead like this, it'd have to twist, so this is just relaxed slightly. Okay, so here we go. Once again, this section. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Needle at seat bottom. Fan through the back. Don't fall. Get your root, then shift. Next, turn and white snake puts out tongue. Now this one, there's a transition. There's somebody, something happening back here. So I transition into my center position. Then the white snake puts out tongue. This is kind of an interesting movement, white snake. John, would you uh, come on in here, your glasses? Uh, um, okay, white snake puts out tongue. So I'll say he's over there. And uh, I've just done fan through the back. Now this is one of those movements, I, I could make up something 
for this transition. But we're just basically, I hear something, and I'm basically coming into my on guard centered position. So the transition, what we're, it's sort of like, because I'm here, I'm very vulnerable in here, and I know that's probably where John wants to be kind of getting me. So as I make the transition, I drop this hand to protect my, the first thing I do is I drop in the, uh, the elbow to protect. At the same time, this is coming over, protect myself while I'm coming over, but then it's going to drop into this kind of position that we have. Okay, so we're not worried, we're not going to worry too much about the transition application. We'll just get there. So we shift back and turn. We'll work on that in a minute. Okay, now, a couple of things could happen. He could be punching me with his hand like, like he was thinking about trying to get me in, a, in, a, in the ribs, right? Because I'm not quite turned. So as he comes in, I outreach and lead him, see? Depending upon his level, I can, he can punch you low, right? punching high. So it's a join and lead movement. And so once I've led him, I follow it up with a palm strike. I've closed him up and followed this with a palm strike. You see? So once he's here, he punches in. I can make this into a grab and hit him. Okay? Now you notice almost always in, almost always in Tai Chi, what we, when we neutralize, and once I've attached, twisting is a good thing to do because you, you put this person in a very uncomfortable position. And it's energetically, it's good for me. Uh, you know, because it's just the center twisting, and the center twist that puts him in a bad position. Okay, so that's one possibility. The other possibility is what we call when the partner moves first, when the partner moves, I move first. And that always seemed strange to me when I was first uh, learning Tai Chi, you know. When the opponent moves, I move first. But it, I can see it, you know, it's like here. Yeah, man, you know, it's like it, you can sense, you can feel the movement. You can start, see when he starts to go. And so then we do this movement. So, so in this particular movement, I'm on ready, and I just feel that he's going to go. So I do this little bam, bam movement, little whap, whap. A little throwing movement. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so let's put this one in. After fan, through the back. Turn. Now let's say that he's punching. So I just join, neutralize, lead down, and at the same time this hand comes out. It looks like brush knee, the same thing would be as brush knee, only the palm is up. This comes to the center. I'm slightly to the right of the right wall, a little bit more open to the right. Let's look at the foot turn. I'm straight toward the, towards the left wall. As we go turn, we turn in the toe to 90, straight to this wall. Shift onto this, into this hip and pivot the toe. Now I'm all into this uh, left hip so I can step slightly back to where right push upward was and all that and come in and turn in the back toe. All right, so turn, turn into 90. Shift and open a bit, pivot, step out 30 to this side or slightly to the right and shift and continue. The right hand drops straight down the front of the body. Then as you, as you step, it comes out, but don't shift the weight yet. Then shift the weight and make this palm strike. Right hand straight down, left hand, palm facing outward. It drops into the shoulder position. As we step 
out and back. Okay, watch from the, this direction. The, this hand comes with the body, the other hand drops straight down. Shifting, it drops into place. As we step, the hand comes out. And finally end up with a palm strike. Okay, so uh, I'm afraid to run out of time. And um, okay, so we will we will be working um, on this. You know, work on this as much as you can. I'll review it next lesson. Uh, we'll work on this and uh, then add in some more movements. So I think we're doing great. And. Um, do work on this. Practice, practice, practice. All right? So thank you all very much, and see you again next time.